Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with the Soul Train Music Awards for 2019, you guys. Y'all excited about the review? Let's get to it, shall we? So you guys know how I like to review these. First, uh, we break it up. Um, we're going to start with the pre-show, and then we're going to get into the show. We're going to talk about the host. We're going to talk about the um, presentations of the awards. Um, we're going to talk about the cipher. We're going to talk about the performances, and then we'll talk about the special tributes in that order, okay? So um, first, let's start with the pre-show. Let me tell you how comical that shit was. I usually don't even watch the pre-show for the Soul Train Music Awards because I never really remember that they even have one for it. But this this season, I was just like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch. When I tell you that shit was so fucking flim-flam and halfway put together. <laughs> First of all, they had Ray J as a host, who actually is good as a host. But as far as the production, they could not ever seem to know when the camera was live who was supposed to be up on stage, okay? Every time they went from one person to the next, it was a whole bunch of the production team all in there trying to get shit together. And then they'd be like, oh, oh, we live? Oh, okay. And then they have to run off. It happened like 10 times. June Ambrose, I'm gonna need her to know the people that she's talking to. She had a full interview with Latoya Luckett. And then when Latoya Luckett went off, later on she was like, okay, and next we have Latoya Luckett. And she was just like, oh, no. Uh, June, you just spoke to her. Claudia, the whole time that she's doing her thing, she's looking up, reading the damn cue card that's way up at the top. I said, can y'all bring that shit down? Because she's looking up in the sky the whole time that she's reading the cue card, just looking crazy. Then she was like stuttering a lot. Like I felt like they didn't have their cue cards ahead of time to kind of, you know, figure out what they want to say to make it sound like it was more natural. I mean, hosting is hard. I know that it's hard, you know, so it's hard to come up with things right off the top of your head. I'm not saying that everybody should have been super professional and know exactly what they was doing, but I'm going to need the production people to get the shit together. If you insist on having some shit live, then you're going to have to, look, we can't be having y'all every few minutes not knowing that the shit was live. The people in the background was laughing like, oh, Okay, and then they must have told him, like, no, just keep on going. The camera's rolling. And then did you guys see when Ray J thought that this one lady was somebody else and then she let him think that the whole time and then she was just like, um, I'm just gonna really just let you know that that is not me. I'm not this whoever this girl is with the last name Long, Sarah Long or something like that. I'm actually this person. And he was just like, oh my God. Do they not have the thing in their ear when somebody can say? Because let me tell you, Ryan Seacrest got the thing in their ear. So when they know that they got something wrong, I'm sure they are corrected in their ear real fast and then they hurry up and switch it up. But honey, they never told Ray J. And Ray J just went on and on about her being on girl uh, uh, sisters and all of that. It was not her. Child, it was the most hilarious shit. I laughed the entire hour. But um, anyway, getting on to the actual show. So you guys, the host are Tashina Arnold and Tisha Martin Campbell, who I believe actually are very good as hosts. Um, yes, they are extra. Yes, they do a lot, okay? Just on this side of doing too much, um, Tisha, whenever I see her perform or do things, she makes me nervous because she's always just, just a whole bunch. Just like my girlfriend used to tell me, you know, Roxanne, you're the only one dancing way, way too hard on the dance floor. <laughs> you need to just calm your ass down. That's kind of what I want to tell Tisha Campbell. But yet and still, I do enjoy them as hosts. But anyway, the opening was on, um, so that the tributes for the night is Yolanda Adams. She's got the Lady of Soul. And then um, the legendary award goes to J Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. So instead of them having Janet Jackson as the opening, they decide to do like a Janet Jackson number. Okay, so Tisha Campbell sings, um, 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 what did she sing? Was it Miss You Much? Yeah, Miss You Much. And then Tashina does Black Cat. But what was really exciting about the opening was that they had MJ, what was her name? MJ Rodriguez, I believe, from Pose. Um, you know, because when they first, first opened, they kind of was voguing. And so she came out and it was actually good to see her. And um, so it was a really cute little opening. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, Tisha played up the fact that she might be a little bit bigger, might be a little bit older, you know, out of breath. And, you know, Tashina's the oversexed, um, uh, 
she thinks she's sexy in her black cat costume and having crushes on uh, Cinqua. Is that his name? The guy that plays Don Cornelius on the um, American Soul. So anyway, it was cute. I didn't have any cringy moments where I was just super uncomfortable. We got through the beginning pretty much okay. And that was kind of how it was for me for the whole episode. They didn't do anything where I was just like, okay, enough. Remember last season, they had that real, I mean, last season, last year, they had that real long skit and it just was not funny. So they didn't do anything like that this season or this year. Thank God. What did you guys think about, um... Tashina and Tisha. Would you guys be willing to have them back? I mean, they are the producers of the show. So um, I, I don't know if Erica Badu is still producing. I didn't look at the credits. But um, yeah, they, they, I think they do a pretty good job putting on a pretty good show. Y'all let me know what y'all thought of them as hosts. This show only had three um, um, awards. They actually had four if we count the one that they gave at the beginning of the... Um, of the um, pre-show they gave one kid an award let's see the soul train certified award it went to trevor jackson i don't know what he sings and um here's my co-worker that can't fucking park <laughs> like she's right in front of me so i was just like i'm sorry you guys let me just act like i don't even see her i know she's gonna get on my nerves so that was one and then they gave out three more in the in the show it's just sort of like it's an award show. I think that we could maybe at least give out, you know, not counting the tributes. They only give out three fucking awards. It don't make no damn sense. So the first award was presented by Keisha Cole and Tank. Okay. And um, I was surprised at the little back and forth banter that Keisha and Tank had. It seems like she was very comfortable with it because, you know, sometimes Keisha's not really the most personable. But um, you can tell that she's grown up. She's matured. Okay. They make a little joke about him talking about, you know, the sucking the dick thing, you know, and, and we get a good hearty har har out of that. And then um, he presents the award for best R&B soul female artist. The winner was her. All right. And when her got up there and did not have on her big glasses, her big dark lokes, and her hair covering her face, I mean, her hair was all back, skin just as smooth, big pretty eyes, face beautiful. I mean, you could tell that she was a pretty girl, but I mean, it was the first time that I had ever seen her without glasses and you know her those dark glasses on i actually was able to see her face she is beautiful okay i was just like oh look how pretty i mean she was she was all done up you know very feminine and and girly and you know i loved her dress her shoes like the whole look was whoever styled her they was on it she looked great congratulations to her then we had Cinqua, okay from um soul train you know what was the only one cringy moment that i had was when tashina arnold She's backing up. <laughs> Tashina Arnold um, as Frank Kirk Franklin, if if she could have premarital sex with Cinqua. I was like, oh my God, girl, you done went too far. Now, you definitely went too far on that one. And I'm thinking to myself, like, he was sitting next to a girl the whole time. I mean, I'm sure it's all jokes and fun, but wasn't that his girl that was next to him? Was like, how long are we going to go on with this one? But whatever. Cinqua gave the award for Best Gospel Inspirational Artist, and that went to Kirk Franklin. Then the last award that was given was um, given by the cast from The Oval. You, Somebody asked me to review that show, you guys. I have watched parts of that first episode, and I was just like, this acting is horrible. Like, horrible horrible and i i can remember that tyler perry's when his shows first start out the, the acting is usually really bad and then it just gets better over the years so i imagine that it will get better over the years once everybody gets settled into that but i cannot i can't sit through no shit like that i haven't watched um sisters though um but that oval oh no no they're up there to present the best new artists and um, all the nominees. Like, I didn't know any of them. Like, the, the only one that I knew was the Summer Girl and it was one other name. And everybody else, I was like, who the fuck are these people? Okay. Um, and then when Summer won, the song that they played when she was walking up there, I was like, oh, that's her song. I didn't even hear 
hear that when I listened to the album. It must be later in the album or something because I didn't even hear it. But then I was like, oh, I like this little song. They do play this on the radio. So I said, okay. It, it's still a little bit mew, mew, pew, pew, but it's not quite all the way, you know. But, um, you know, we just had a conversation about Summer last week and how this whole music thing may not just be for her, you know, with her social anxiety, you know, and for her to get up there and just sort of like, oh, you know, hey, thank you, um, you know, everybody in London on the track and everything and get off of the stage. I was like, we, we need to either get her some media training and learn how to kind of be in front of the camera as best she can, um, or maybe we just need to let the girl just write. Because if you are an artist, even if you don't perform, live if you win awards then you're expected to be at the award show i mean i guess maybe she just won't show up because if she were to win in the future we still gonna need her to be able to say something right so i was just like maybe this just ain't for her and that's fine it's not for everybody um some people do better behind the scenes like i always say if i could get rich and not have to you know be out i would much rather love i would love to be rich and just quiet somewhere. That's probably what Summer might have to do. Just write your music for somebody else, girl. Now, Soul Cipher. This year, it was um, Erica Badu was the DJ, as usual. And we had Carl Thomas. Um, got up there with the Kango, okay, as he usually does. He sounded good. Then we had Keisha Cole. Um, I was like, dang, I miss Keisha Cole. I meant to listen to her album on the way to work today. Because, I, I mean, I'm telling you, that old Keisha... Ooh wee, them was some good old times. I'm telling you, those were some good old times. So I was like, yeah, Keisha, I'm gonna need you to put another album out. Like, what is the holdup? I know she's having babies and all of that, but she needs to get back to it. Are you guys gonna watch her show? I think her show starts soon. I'm not sure how if it's like a just a little small couple of episodes, like three or four, just so her can have a baby, or if this is actually like a full season of her life. Um, but I'm gonna watch it. After her, we had Leandria Johnson, who the gospel singer who is just phenomenal and I love her voice and is so down home and makes you feel like you're listening to good gospel. Um, so she was there. So we had a little gospel spin on it. And then we took it on home with uh, Anthony Hamilton who put his old country, country stank on it. So I like the little cypher between the four of them. I thought they all gelled together at the end when they all did their little singing together. And then here come Erica Badu, just random. Okay, so she gonna sing a high note and then she gonna end it. And then she was just like, ah! <laughs> and then it was over. <laughs> So that damn Erica Badu, I would love to just sit and talk to her. I bet you she is fucking hilarious. Now, the performances. The very first performance that they had, not counting the, you know, opening of the show, was from a guy named Sir. And he's from Inglewood. And he was up there with his brother, um, D Smoke. Now, listen. I was like, I'm, I'm feeling kind of, I'm feeling some kind of way that I ain't never even heard of this boy. And he's very clearly is West. He's very clearly West Coast, you guys. I mean, he had on the full, he didn't have on Chuck Taylors, but he had on Vans. That's what the kids wear now, okay? But the big flannel, you know, shirt, you know, the baggy looking sweats, like he had the whole look. And I was like, I have never heard of this guy. So at first I was listening, I was intrigued. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to listen to his music. You guys tell me that D Smoke was on that Netflix, Netflix show, Hustle and, Hustle and Flow or something like that. Um, but I did like the two of them because it was, they, they, the way they sounded and the things that they did didn't look like when you looking at them, they look like, like a rapper, you know, and I guess they rap too, but yeah, I was intrigued. So I was, I was like, I was going to have to try to listen to that. You know, I had a night with Siri, me and Siri, honey. I asked Siri all night, who is this? What is this? And she was like, child, I don't know. <laughs> Siri was with me, but we didn't know who the fuck none of these people were. But uh, yeah, I was just like, okay, uh, sir. All right, we're going we gonna to check him out. Um, then we had K. Michelle perform a song called Can You Make It Rain, which actually is a cool song, okay? The song is nasty, though. And um, so she took the melody of um, Can You Stand the Rain, and she changed it up to Can You Make It Rain, and she's talking about getting it wet and all of this, and I'm thinking to myself, like, oh... I was actually uncomfortable because you got Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis right there. Like, you are really taking liberties 
to take their song. I'm sure they approved it. I mean, they, you know, they released the song for her to be able to do. But, you know, you take a classic like that and then you saying shit like that. I was looking at them like, I wonder how they felt about it. But the song is itself is a nice, you know, cool song. And I always believe that K. Michelle can sing. She sounded great to me. You can tell she was singing live. And um, I'm always shocked when people say that she can't sing. That girl can definitely sing. You know, I think people just get her her, her personality or attitude mixed up with the talent. The talent is there. At least that's what I think. But yeah, that song is nasty. Then we had a girl named Tmar. She did the side stage um she was Issa Rae's artist because I remember Issa Rae saying it in the pre-show. Um, and the girl was cool. But the side stage things, first of all, they don't never give them enough time. Really, they should have those artists um, perform in the pre-show so they can do their whole full set and we can hear something. Okay? And then they can maybe dedicate the time that they give to these artists on that side stage to maybe putting out two or three more awards. All right? But yeah, that girl performed and we had another um another person on the side stage. I think the boy name was Pink Sweats or something. Oh, who the fuck is this? <laughs> And you know, he was real Levertified. He had like his shirt was open right here. You know, he had a little taco meat, you know, but he had the full beard and, you know, the real low hairline and the cut, you know, dark skinned guy, um, you know, chubsy, ubsy. So I was just like, but Pink Sweats, was that his name? And he had on Pink Sweats too? Go figure. We had Tayana Major 9 and Earth Gang. First of all, I'm going to need y'all to shorten that name. Ain't nobody be saying all of that. I was like, what did she say? I had to keep on rewinding it. Um, they performed this song called Collide. And evidently, this is like a spoken word type song that I think Lena Waithe had wrote for the movie um, Queen and Slim that's coming out this weekend. So um, they were on there to perform the song. I had never heard of them. I've never heard the song. I love the way that the stage was set up. They had the, the rims up there and they had the flowers and it was just all very, um, something about the setup up there. It caught my eye and I liked it. All the big, bright, pretty colors of oranges and yellows and reds, you know, everything was very vibrant. Um, and then they had on their, um, he had like on a head wrap, they had all the beautiful colors in it and they all had, you know, they had on nice colors and everything. <laughs> and y'all then they got up there with that song and I was just like, Let me give y'all a little a little vocal lesson. There's a such thing as sitting on a note, okay? And when you slide up to a note, um, sometimes it don't sound all that good to me. The name of the song is Collide. And um, Brother Man got up there and he was just like, When we collide, when we collide, it's a beautiful disaster. When I crash into you, 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 I crash into you, you, you. <laughs> I was like, this is really not catching my, you know, I need it to be when we collide. Hi, hi. Hey. When we collide, it's a beautiful disaster. When I crash into you, 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 hey, crash into you, you, you. Look, I did, I did a little remix for that ass, and I was just like, good lie. No. <laughs> Look at me acting like I know what I'm talking about, y'all. I do know a little bit. But I'm telling you, he was laying on that note so hard, I was just like, oh, no. When the girl came and sang her part, she was better. Well, I'm going to need Brother Man to tighten up on them notes a little bit. Then we had Wale and Jeremiah. Okay, no, uh. They got up there and sang um, on chill. We to be the tribe of D for once. Why can't we just chill with me for once? Maybe you could be your chill tonight. Maybe you could be. Uh, we had Queen Naja. 
Okay, she seems to be the new Faith Evans of the shows. Like, they have her on every show. She's always singing on all the shows. And we'll never see the child win no awards. I don't even know the song, but I'm sure the kids do. I'm sure Jada knows her. She loves her. So, um, and she actually is a cute girl. She can sing and everything. Um, loved her outfit. Hated her drill team boots. I was like, man, who put these white clunky boots on this girl? I mean, it was so boho-ish. She actually could have came out in, like, little ballet slippers or, like, little, um, really nothing. She didn't even have to have anything on her feet. I mean, she could have took a page out of Janae Eichel's book and just came out there and performed with no shoes on. But y'all, them boots was killing me. And I think she sang a song called Do I Love You More. Did anybody check with Lil Mo and see, and see what she thought about the performance? Then, you guys, we had Luke James, BJ, the Chicago Kid, and Ro James. Now, I don't know how this mixture happened. Okay. First of all, we had just came off of the Yolanda Adams thing. We was just in church and I'm talking about in church. I'm going to talk about her in a minute. And then they come bringing out damn Luke James. This nigga is in some red satin pajamas in a fucking bed. And, uh, you know, we talking about having sex and all of this. And, you know, I was like, who placed this? They could have put the Kalai kids after Yolanda Adams, anything, but this this was so inappropriate. I was just like, oh, so I couldn't even get into the performance, but even the song itself wasn't good. But they must play it out in L.A. because um, Tashina knew the song, but I have never heard of that song. Not that, I mean, I would know. I mean, I ain't, you know, all of that, but it was a bit of a mess, actually. Now, the tributes. Now, the special awards, the honorees, Lady of Soul Award went to Yolanda Adams, you guys. I've always loved Yolanda Adams. There's something about her voice, and when she sings, it's just a voice that always touches me every single time. I remember seeing her sing at West Angeles once, I believe. Um, was it? No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was not... That wasn't her. But um, anyway, she is... Uh, I just love to hear her sing, and she did her speech and she got back up there she had on this bad ass suit now the first before she went on with the suit that sparkle dress that she had on was beautiful i was thrown off with the belt not quite sure what i thought if that was the denim you know in the middle i wasn't sure now what, what did we think about that y'all did y'all see that what y'all thought but anyway when she came back out in that suit Oh my God, I was like, that is definitely a suit Roxanne would wear. And we bought the same build and everything. I, that shit would... Yolanda, girl, if you're watching, go on and send me that, that suit, girl. Sang all of her hits. Um, I Got the Victory and um, uh, um, um, the song that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis wrote for her. What was the name of the song? You guys can't even think of the songs right now. I wrote it down. Open My Heart to You, then Be Blessed, and um, then close it out with The Battle Is Not Yours, It's the Lord. Oh, my God. Let me tell you. First, she was just performing. Then, somewhere that spirit snuck in, and she was singing her ass off. You probably shouldn't even say that about a gospel singer, but I'm telling you, I started to get the spirit. Like, I started to get that tingle chill when you know you about to start shouting. I got that. I was right there in my living room watching. I was like, Yolanda, not too many people could do this. Get that kind of reaction out of you when you are watching on TV. I mean, she sang the hell out of that battle is not yours it's the lord oh i won't even try to sing it child that was it was spectacular i said you better do it i love yolanda adams and it was so nice to see her daughter out there you could tell had so much pride and love for her mother and her loving her daughter back i was just like oh you know we knew that yolanda had had a tough time with that husband that she had to leave um, but, you know, Yolanda stayed on top, stayed classy, and I just, I love her. And then we had the special tribute to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Um, not sure how they broke it up. They, they did some ballads earlier, so we had Boys to Men get up there to sing, um, Tender Love, Tender Love, Love So Tender, Holding Me Close to You, Baby I So Render. I was like, where's Bo Lady Lou? And ain't that, that from Force and Days? <laughs> I wanted to see them. Ain't no telling where they are. And then Boys and Men sang um, On Bended Knees. And um, I just had memories of when I broke up with this one guy to, and that song was playing. It was one of the most dramatic and stupid breakups that I've ever been in. I can just remember that song. So when I th hear that song, I think about how stupid and crazy that little breakup was. <laughs> it was real dramatic, just like the song, I want a new life and I want it with you. 
If you feel the same, don't never let it go. You gotta believe in the spirit of love. <laughs> Let me keep on going, y'all. I gotta get out of here and get on back to work. Then Stokely came out. At first, I was like, oh, he kind of looked like Jermaine Dupri a little bit. But then I got a good look. I said, oh, no, that's my boy Stokely. He is so sexy to me. And I don't know if it's just because of his um, singing, but it's something about his stage presence. The way he moves on stage, whenever I see it, I'll be like, ooh, I like you, Stokely. And honey, he was hitting them notes. He sang um, Pretty Brown Eyes. And still can hit all of those notes, them syncopated notes that he always does. I was just like, yes, yes, Stokely. I love he. And then we finally get to the actual award where they have the presentation. A baby, baby face comes out and, and says how, oh, I got to get off of here. Baby face comes out and says, um, you know, his little tribute and then talks about the do little short documentary that's coming up where everybody's talking about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and all of that. And I was looking at baby face and I was like, now, what is going on here today? Am I thinking that baby face? I've never thought that baby face was sexy. And I was like, well, why am I getting a little bit of the Denzel vibe? I was like, is this his grown man Steve's that I'm starting to like here? I was like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> My baby face was looking good up there, child. And, um, you know, he did the little thing and um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis got up there and, and just so their era of music was definitely when I was in my 20s and I mean that was the soundtrack to my 20s all of the music that they have I can clearly remember a time or two whatever I was doing when I was listening to those songs you know they give a nice speech and then we have uh sounds of black blackness come out there as long as you keep your hand to the sky be optimistic. Had Ann Nesby, is that her name? Had her up there singing. She sounded just like she sounds on the album. Um, then we had the SOS band. I said, oh, I didn't even know that they was with the SO SOS band. I guess that was their very beginning. Okay, please be good to me. Hey. <laughs> Y'all, my brother made me a tape for my car when I first got my car, when my parents bought my car and he made a tape for me and he put that song on there and the name of the tape was called Cartoons. Okay, then they did Tell Me If You Still Care About Me. I said, oh, this is cha-cha music, bitch. You gonna make me get on this dance floor. And then we had Sherelle and Alexander O'Neill come out there. Charisma, you was wrong for saying you was hoping that he had his new teeth in. I was looking and them teeth looked like they wasn't there. But then I was like, I saw some little bit of somethings up there, but they didn't look like full-blown teeth. They looked like they had been gnawed down some. Uh, let me not make fun about Sherelle. You know, that is a definite hit. Saturday Love. Um, but when you see the two of them together and it's sort of crackish and you know they've had a like a really hard rough life um you know you kind of feel sorry for them it kind of reminds you when when uh rick rick james and tina marie sang fire and desire that time you didn't know whether you were supposed to enjoy it or kind of just be like then we had the time come out and you guys when the time came out it was over okay because you know i loves me they got out there first and they did jungle love okay um, and then they turned it into the bird. And you guys know I have seen, ooh, I have seen Purple Rain probably 300 times. I know those routines to those songs like the back of my hand. I had to get up and do it. Blue was real stressed out and <laughs> everything. But, um, I, you know, what? Hallelujah. That should be jamming. Whoa. And just to hear the music sound good, sound tight. Okay, why did Morris Day look like Giancarlo Esposito? I was just like, oh, he's lost a lot of weight. He just looks different now. They sounded good. In all of the same feels that you got when you would hear the time, Morris Day and the time back in the day. Great, 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 great memories. And they're the ones that actually closed out, even closed out the full show. I got to get off of here. You guys, I didn't took too long for lunch. Anyway, you guys give me your good, your bad, your ugly, what was happening on the show. Um, and um, y'all do all of that in the comments below. All right, rock stars, let me get off of here. I've been out here too long. Okay, make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks, the channel is Forest Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.